So I had a whole like plan on like what I was gonna talk about and like had a ton of stuff that I wanted to go into. Um, and then I got on Facebook and then I saw a couple posts that made me really mad. So instead, we're gonna talk about why the American education system is trash. I have a list. So well, I was fully prepared to sit down and be like, America needs to get its crap together because they've gone down so much in the like ranking of education. But then I Googled it and apparently they're ranked like second as of 2018, which I don't really know that I believe because then I also saw on a different website that they're ranked 27th which I feel like makes more sense. I feel like that's more likely. But either way, the point is the quality of education has severely gone downhill. Anybody can tell you that. Um, I, it's been a few years since I've been in school. It's been over three years since I graduated high school and it's been over a year since I dropped out of college. So not crazy long, but long enough that I haven't been in class in quite a while. High school? even before high school, like elementary, middle school, high school, whatever, um, teachers are not allowed to teach. They go through this extensive training in college to get their degree in education, and then you get to school and you're given a curriculum, which is good. I will admit that there are good things about having a curriculum because a lot of like history classes especially used to be whatever they want to teach, so they would teach a lot of like local history, and then people wouldn't know about like world history, which is a problem. And I think the curriculum can be really good for things like that because we need to know about the history of the world and about America. So because history repeats itself. And so, you know, there needs to be structure. Structure is good. But also teaching for tests, I think. It's not so much the curriculum that's awful, it's the teaching for tests. Standardized tests do not do anything to test intelligence. They don't. And I say that as a person who's really, really good at taking tests. I never had any sort of test anxiety or anything, so I was really, really good at taking these tests. But they don't prove anything. I always thought that I was smart because I was good at taking these tests, because I'm good at getting good grades in classes. It doesn't prove anything. The smartest people I know have terrible test anxiety, were terrible at taking tests, and didn't make very good grades when they were in school. People have passions for teaching. Say, I want to go and help these children learn and help these children be able to be themselves. And that's great. That is what teaching should be about, is to be able to teach children and be themselves and learn everything they need to know. And you may say, like, oh, well, I didn't need to know any of the math stuff that I learned or whatever. I haven't used any of that. That's not the point, okay? The point of, like, math and stuff like that is so that you know how to do it, A, but so that you know how to think. Because when your brain can think of, like, how to get to a solution, then you can apply that in other situations. So you go into life, and it's not necessarily a math problem, but your brain's like, oh, I work. I can work through things and figure things out. And that's the point of classes like that. Okay? But people go through all these classes and stuff, and they're like, I want to teach, I want to help children. And then they can't do that because the government says, oh, no, you need to get these kids to pass this test that means nothing later on in their life. If you were to ask me now, at a job, how did you do on your tax test, or your star test, or whatever they're calling it, I did great. But that has no bearing on my ability to do any sort of job whatsoever, so I don't see the point. Now, the first post that set me off on this rant about American education was a post about a young boy, he was 11, and his hair was really long, like, as long as mine from the picture that they showed. I don't know if that was actually the kid, but his hair was long. And they told him he could not come to school because of his long hair. He had to cut it off or he couldn't come to elementary school. I said primary school, which is like elementary school, whatever. The point is he couldn't come to school because he, did, because he had long hair. Let children be children. They are there to learn. The fact that this boy had long hair has no bearing on his ability to learn, on his ability to receive an education. So it's adults coming in and saying, well, you don't get to come in and learn because you have long hair. You're messing up this child's entire life because of how his hair looks. Are you going to make all the girls in this class cut off all their hair too? Because if I walked into a school with hair this long, it's completely fine. But if a boy walks into a school with hair this long, then it's a problem. 
which that goes into a whole nother conversation about gender roles and gender expectations, which I could talk for hours about, but that's not what we're here for. You take, you take these little boys and you're saying, well, I can't teach you because your hair is too long. What does that say about you? Not even about them. A, you're making them feel bad. This is an 11 year old. He likes his hair. Who are you to say, no, you have to go and cut it? If he was 21 and had hair that long, you couldn't say anything to him. A college isn't gonna kick him out, generally speaking, for having that long of hair. So why is an elementary school gonna do that to him? Why is, and when I was in school, I actually knew a kid who got suspended for having long hair and for having just a little bit of facial hair. And they're like, no, you have to shave. Also, I never really understood that because when you're in school and they're like, you have to shave, what's the point? They're just going to graduate. People immediately graduate and grow beards because they're not allowed to during school. So like, and it's a natural body process. I don't understand why it's such an issue. Let people look the way they want to look. Obviously, if you're coming into school naked, that could be a problem, okay? But when it comes to, like, hair and stuff, they say it's a distraction. But how is it really a distraction? We see people every day with things like this. Long hair, with beards, simple things like that. There's a whole discussion about colorful hair colors and stuff like that. I'm for colorful hair colors. I want to dye my hair some crazy color and live my life like that, but I haven't done it yet. But... There's a whole different discussion. You could argue that that's distracting, and maybe it is for the first day or two, and then people get used to it. Kids are really resilient, and they're going to look at something and be like, oh, that's weird, and then they're going to be like, okay, whatever, and they're going to move on with their life. Why can adults not be like that? I don't understand. Third, another post that I saw about five minutes after I saw the post about the boy with long hair was a post saying, like, this kid with rich parents who had gone to the same college was like hey my parents are rich alumni can I come here and they were like hey full ride and then this kid with like very little money who like who wants an education and wants to go out and do like really good things for the world is like I'm poor but I need an education please and then the college is like have you filled out your FAFSA maybe that's not necessarily how it goes but it feels like it when colleges are like have you filled out your FAFSA um, I didn't really get a whole lot from FAFSA, actually, so I still graduated with, I didn't even graduate, I still dropped out of college with a bunch of debt. Why is college so expensive? And yes, you could say, well, go to a community college. Community colleges are just as good. You are correct. Community college affords many people who can't afford private universities. It gives them a better education. It gives them a secondary education that they would otherwise have not have been able to get. And had I gone to a community college, I probably could have graduated without any debt because I could have found a job that could afford that. However, some of the best colleges and universities for certain fields like psychology or for nursing or anything like that, they're not community colleges. They're private universities or even if they're state universities, they're still four-year universities that are a lot more expensive and a lot of people cannot afford those. So if you want to get the best education in your field that you have a passion for and want to go into, you can't. You can't get the best education that there is because it's too expensive and you can't afford it. And yeah, you could get your job and then go back once you're making a bit more money, but why wouldn't you want the best education to start with? And why is that not given to us? I don't, I'm not asking for free education. And when a lot of people say like free education, obviously that comes out of your taxes. A little bit of discussion, not trying to get political, not the point. But also, and also they mean like community college, which we've already discussed is a cheaper option that's really, really good. And I definitely recommend it for people, even though that wasn't the route that I took. And yeah, there are professors who have gone, the professors have been in their fields for years and years and years and have the highest possible degrees that they can. So obviously it's going to be a bit more expensive because of things like that, because they have nicer facilities and things like that. But it's $40,000 a year. I had loans, I had scholarships, I had, I got $13,000 a year in scholarships over that because that was like my minimum scholarship that I got for my grades and I still paid $400 out of pocket every month after loans and scholarships and grants and FAFSA and whatever. I still had to pay them out of pocket because it's ridiculously expensive to get to further your education in America. It's part of the reason I dropped out because I'm not gonna pay you $40,000 a year for something that I don't care about. Anyway, 
And we shouldn't present a problem without a solution. I don't really have too much of a solution, but I do have some comments in the fact that um, Finland and Canada have really good like education systems. And if you're from those places and I'm wrong, please correct me because that's just what I found when I Googled it, which coincidentally is where I've learned most of the things that I know in my life is from Google. Um, so in Canada, they invest in their teacher and student welfare. So they're like, are our teachers doing okay? Are our students doing okay? And they invest in that, which is a really good way to get people to care and a really good way to get people to want to be there and to want to learn and to want to teach, things like that. They really invest in their teachers and students. Finland has a great education system. Everything that I found said that Finland was like in the top five, at least, of education in the past few years. They reevaluate their system every four years according to some website that I was on. I don't know. I try not to look at like Wikipedia and stuff because that's easily changed. So this was like some organization website or something. They reevaluate every four years to make sure that they are current and to make sure that they are on track with what their country needs. So at the end of four years, if they're like, well, we're not doing well in this um, area or at the end of four years, they're like, well, our students and our teachers are not happy. Obviously, we're not doing something right. So then they go and they fix that. You know what America does? They add more standardized tests. What we need to do is we need to evaluate. We need to take into consideration that teachers should be allowed to teach. They shouldn't have to teach for a test. Yes, there should be some sort of standard curriculum that like kids need to know this. But also if there's other things that teachers are like, oh, let's throw this in there. It'll be a little bit more fun. It's a really great, interesting story. Like let the kids learn that. Random little fun facts like that stick with kids and they learn more and if there's like things that the kids want to do teachers should be allowed to do that instead of being like no we have to be on the schedule otherwise you're not going to know everything that you need to know for this test which to be fair the kids aren't going to remember by the time the test comes around anyway any of those reviews and stuff i was like let me look back at this paper from the first semester that i don't know what i was talking about because it's been six months since i had to take any of this the kids aren't going to remember they're not going to care Yes, I understand that you're trying to test their knowledge, and that's great. Kids should be remembering things. They should be teaching them things that they're going to want to remember that can help them later on in their life. I'm just really against standardized tests. Uh, whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's my fault with the American education system. Let teachers teach. Make sure kids are happy. Let children look how they want to look. Make college a little bit cheaper so that people can work a minimum wage job and maybe afford it. Um, yeah. If you have comments, concerns, questions, anything like that, if I said something that's wrong and you would like to educate me, not belittle me because that's very rude, let me know down below in the comments um, and we will discuss. Bye.